Hey guys, Doug the Michigan Piper coming to you from the Pipe Rest. Uh, enjoying the moment right now with my uh, with my pipe. I'm, I've got the uh, Morgan Bones bent brandy today with some chalk tall. Uh, excuse me while I get my pager turned off here. With some chalk tall from Country Squire. And uh, today we're going to be doing another Old Ways installment. I picked up something I thought you guys would find interesting, uh, and that's called a Cape Cod fire lighter or a Cape Codder. Uh, sometimes they're called smudge pots, smudge pots, um, and usually smudge pot is more of a generic term. So um, everything I've seen is is they're called Cape Codder. So I'll throw a couple pictures up right here, and uh, what a Cape Cod fire lighter is, guys, is it's a what they used to use in the uh, 1800s, early 1900s, uh, to light their fires. Now, it didn't necessarily take the place of flint and steel or anything like that, but what it did do for these people is that uh, they could light this thing and stick it underneath the, the elevated fire like you see in this picture here, and uh, it, it, would, uh, it would light the fire and without kindling. Now, um, this is just a wand with a pumice stone on the end of it, and that pumice stone obviously is very porous. So that pumice stone will soak up the whale oil that they would put in these pots. And there's a couple of different types of pots, as you can see here. Uh, the, uh, the little cast iron pots or, or the pitcher style pots. Um, and uh, they would put whale oil, and then after that they put kerosene in these, and it would soak it up. Uh, and then towards the end they would use lamp oil. Uh, now, we found this ad online, um, and I'm going to put a link in the description, guys, of this uh, this little, I don't know what you call it, like article that was done up very well, uh, done up on, on these Cape Cod fire starters. And in this ad, you can see that uh, it talks about uh, they were sold primarily in the Cape Cod shop in New York City, and uh, they found they actually found this ad that was pretty cool. Uh, and they come, like I said, they come in different styles. Um, but uh, these prices are even on here and everything, so I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, so I decided to order one of these uh, because I just thought they were, they were kind of neat. So I did order one, and here's what it looked like when it showed up. Now, if you're familiar with cast iron, cast iron cleans up pretty well. And so I ended up uh, cleaning it up. And what I have now is a Cape Cotter that looks like this. It cleaned up very nicely. I had to buy a little top to go on it and uh, clean the, clean this up and oiled it. Turned out very nice. Now, um, I will warn you if you have one of these, uh, if you decide to order one, and this one I got guys for like $15 and it was uh, uh, like $10 shipping. So I got it for 25 bucks. The, the top, the brass was actually coated. So I ended up taking the coating off. Uh, I didn't realize I had a coating on it. I probably would have left it. So. Uh, a lot of antique dealers right now are, are crying or cringing, one of the two or both. Um, so I'll have to always polish the brass probably. But And then I ordered this little topper to go with it uh, off of eBay or off of uh, Amazon uh, to be able to do that. So this wand is a little older, so it's been well used. But this would be the part that you would soak in the pot. And then, you know, once it's soaked, then you could pull this out, stick it, on, light it, and stick it under your fire. Now, um, they, they're, I've, I've read on several places where they burn for five to ten minutes. Some people would leave them burn until they went out, and then when they're done with their fire, they pull them out, stick them back in their pot. Other people, and I've seen there's a couple of YouTube videos out there actually with the kerosene, which I wouldn't use in the house, but the kerosene, they'd still be going, and they'd just stick it in the kerosene and put it out. Now, as a firefighter, I can tell you that uh, there are... Uh, you can do that. You can put a cigarette out in gasoline if you do it right. Um, so I don't know. I don't want to tell you, hey, go out and buy these, and you can put the flame out in the pot. Um, but there's videos out there for it. I would I would want to try it a couple of times, especially if you were to use something like lamp oil. But uh, you know, I thought about Pat, um, Pallet and Piper. You guys hear about hear me talk about them all the time. Uh, but Pat, for your your fireplace outside, I think this would be great, uh, a great addition to to that scene. So. I just thought it was pretty cool, guys, that uh, 
uh, these were out there. I'd never heard of them before. This is something that I've never seen, you know, and I, of course, when it's something from from way back when, uh, I want to throw it out there. But yeah, very popular in the, uh, I got my notes here, but very popular in the in the uh, 19th, late 19th, early 20th, 20th century. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's about all I had on it, but I'm tempted, I'm tempted to fill this one with lamp oil, um, but we don't have a fireplace, and uh, at least not a working one in the house right now. So this will probably sit with my fake fireplace down here in the, in the pipe rest and uh, be able to look at it and know that, uh, you know, what it used to be used for, and it obviously was well used. So, um, guys, that was that was all I had for the old ways today, but I thought you'd get a kick out of that. I'm going to relight my pipe here because I'm sure it's gone out and talking. But uh, I hope you guys are all doing well, and until next time, you take care.